what we're looking at here. spent the morning photographing some whitetails and uh, and it was really nice because it started to snow and it started to snow really heavy to the point where I couldn't even focus or even manually focus I couldn't find the deer in it it was so heavy but it Good to be prepared for these conditions. And what I mean by that is your clothing, your equipment. And I'm gonna cover a bit of that right now because the, the deer are gone. And uh, I think one of the most important things when you're out here enjoying these great outdoors is to make sure that you're warm. Make sure that you're, uh, that you're comfortable. Make sure that your hands aren't cold. Make sure your equipment's working well. Um, and and I usually start with my base layer, which is really, I just wear a pair of pants, just a regular pair of pants, but I never, they're not jeans, they're not tight fitting pants. I want to be able to bend, because I spend most of my time on the ground like this. And I wear these, this is a, a polyester, 100% polyester pair of um, um, bib coveralls. You see, there's no way for snow to get up in here, all the way up to here. They're, they're, they're waterproof. It says waterproof on them. It doesn't say water resistant. It says waterproof. And if they're not waterproof, I would spray them to make them waterproof. And, uh, and they are, they're larger than I need. I'm not a very big guy. And these are probably extra large. I'm not sure, but there's plenty of room. When I sit down, I don't feel, there's no tightness in my knees. There's, there's plenty of room to move around if I wanted to put more clothes underneath here. I mean, typically, I, you'll see me, you guys have seen me wear these on almost all my videos. And I'll take this off and show this to you. This is, this is, again, this is my base layer. I put this vest on. And the reason I don't have the vest in underneath here, because sometimes I want to take it off. It's about minus 12, minus 14 out here today. And I was going to sit here for a long time, so I wore a lot of down. You can't beat down. Down is by far the best product for keeping you warm. The natural, uh, the, the natural way down works is that when your body heats up all the down feathers inside of here, it actually expands and creates pockets of warm air inside the down. Which that is critical. For, when this vest goes with me everywhere. I absolutely love this vest, and it's and it's the thickest vest that this company makes. I think it's a. North Face, and uh, and I really love this vest. Now it's made out of really thin material, and it would tear really easy. And you notice I'm always wearing this. I either have it in brown or I have it in blue, and and this is a uh, tough, tough piece of material. It's not expensive. It's it's uh, I don't even know what it's made out of, but it's it's I'm not worried about tearing it. And I've got several tears in these things, and they get dirty, and I can just throw them in the wash. Much easier than have to wash something with down. So I wear this a lot. This is with me all the time in the winter. And underneath here, I have a thin, thin shell underneath this shirt, and that is designed so that, uh, that it, it'll wick the, uh, the, the moisture off of that. I try not to sweat. So when I came down here, I didn't have my coat on. I came down and because I didn't want to sweat. And once I got set up, then I could, and I, as soon as I felt like it was starting to cool down a bit, I knew it wasn't gonna sweat. Then I start zipping everything up. And then I put this coat on. Now this is my coat I use for really cold temperatures. And it's not the kind of coat you're gonna wear when you go for a hike. This is a, this is a Canada Goose coat. And it is incredibly warm. And I wear this every day on my polar bear trips because I'm standing still for so long. And, uh, and there's a lot of times I'm maybe not wearing it, but it's always, you know, in the vehicle with me. And it's, it's one of the thickest uh, down coats they sell. And it is like made out of like a canvas. So it's really tough. I don't have to worry about tearing it. It's not like this thin material. It's nice and light, this material, 
but it's not going to last me long. I am a guide and it's important that these uh, that these products can stand up for many years because this, I think this is a thousand dollar coat. It might be even more than that. I can't remember now. I've had it for a long time. It's showing, starting to show a little bit of wear on here, but uh, this is this is the kind of clothing you want. Down is the kind of clothing you want to wear when you're sitting still for a long time. It is. It really keeps the heat in. Like I can in minus 30 degrees. What I'm wearing right now, I can zip this up, and I can sit for six hours, anyways, without getting cold. Now I do have lighter coats that I've worn when it's not as cold. And, uh, and they help, but when it comes to sitting in a blind for six hours or longer, this, this is the material I want to wear. And also what I have is this, this is like a buff. It's, 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 the company's called Buff, and it's, but it's a heavier material. And what I do, it's, it goes down over my collar. See, it fits down over my collar of the, the brown shirt. I'm not sure if it's covered now, but I did originally put it down over top of it. And I put this up like this, and I'll put it up like this, and and this prevents the snow from these trees from falling down my neck. And if you guys have ever had that happen, it is awful. So whenever I get into the thick trees like this here, I usually wear my buff, some kind of some kind of neck protection that comes up here. And what's all because I'm doing a lot of video, my face stays away from me from the camera a lot, but you know, if I'm doing a lot of, taking a lot of images, I'll press my face against this camera. And once you get into the minus 15, minus 20, and you've taken a lot of pictures, the cold from this camera will suck the heat out of your nose and it'll create, you'll get frostbite or frost nip. And I've had many times, especially up when I'm photographing polar bears is when it's really windy and really cold and and I've got my face pressed up against that camera and I'm shooting for like you know I'm shooting for a month two months at a time like a lot of shooting every single day and and I don't realize it but little by little my nose has been getting frostbite frost nip and it gets worse and worse and I've had this big brown circle on the end of my nose it's very attractive and, uh, and that's, you, you have to be very careful for that. So that's where this thing comes in handy. You can pull it up over top. If you get a thicker one, it would be even better. But this at least stops the transmission of, of, of the, the drawing the heat out of your nose uh, from putting it against the camera. So really important to have this if you're gonna press your face against your camera for a long time. Um, what else to remember here? Uh, yeah, tripods tripods I mean I have two tripods so my my vlogging tripod is a Manfrotto little tiny light Manfrotto tripod this is a Jobu tripod and this is the one that goes with me everywhere this is uh, and I have I have um, I have uh, uh, different makes of tripods also and uh, and and they're great tripods but this is the one I use 99% of the time and the reason why is because it's the weight to strength ratio is huge. I mean, I can stand on top of this tripod and it's half the weight of most tri any other tripod I've ever used. I mean, it is so light. So for me, for, for whether I'm hiking, uh, back, you know, backpacking in, or, or if I'm flying to a location, this, this is the tripod I want with me all the time. But what's really great about this tripod is there's no frills. There's nothing to break on this thing. And these, these little... Um, the little, little part of the legs here, the way the gear works here is, is if, when I shove a tripod down in the snow, like this here, and I shove it down like this, it has a tendency of springing back up again. Because as it goes down to the snow, the legs are spreading. And you can actually break these pieces here on... On, on, on like my uh, my vlogging card, the Manfrotto, uh, you have to be very careful with the Manfrotto. This one here, not so. This is a very strong uh, setup. This will not break, but you still don't want to do that. So when I shove my tripods down in the snow, I'll bend the legs in a bit, and then I'll shove it down. You see the way it went down deeper now? And it went down to some, it went down to some deeper, oops. 
There's the mice in this one, so this has been sliding on me quite a bit. So you want to sort of bend, uh, push them in a little bit when you shove them in the snow because then they'll start spreading out. And then you'll get a more stable support than would if you had them fully spread out and then stick them in the snow because then you could actually, uh, you could actually break these things if you're using uh, the, uh, the cheaper tripods. But these ones are huge, huge positive uh, uh, points for these blocks to sit against and you won't break these. These are super tough. And, uh, and again, once again, super light. And along with it, I, you know, I also, you know, this is the uh, Jobu Junior uh, gimbal head and it's really, really, really light. And that's again what I want with me. I thought I saw a deer uh, with me when I'm going, when I'm traveling. It's, and it'll hold my 500 F4 with no problems. It'll hold a 600 F4. I had a 600 F4. It's, it's, it's solid as can be. And uh, love that equipment. And, uh, and also a camera cover. Like here is all covered in snow and that's what it's for. It's like you want to be able to keep the weather off of your camera gear and your lens because there's places where that where that stuff once it starts melting you bring it inside and there's a bit of snow it can melt and maybe get somewhere into your lens or your camera and uh, and so that's that's important to have this this is a the product of this is called a storm jacket it's 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 super super uh, packable like it's, it's the size of my fist when I'm when I packed it in and uh, and that's what's great about that product is that if it was really bulky like these big rain coats and stuff and then once you use them in the cold what do the ones do in the cold they're like they're solid they're 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 hard and and you can't pack them and you can't work with them this thing stays like this like this in minus 30 minus 40 degrees and that's what you want you want something that's usable and something you're going to bring if you bring something that's big and bulky or, or if you buy something that's big and bulky, you're not going to bring it with you on these trips. It's going to it's, it's going to stay at home because you don't want to carry it. And this one here is not like that. And you can what's nice about this is you can still use the focusing right through here. You don't have to expose. Yeah, you don't have some of those. You got the big arms. You stick your stick your hands into, and and that's great. But again, it's big and bulky here. I, I'm turning the I'm turning my focus right now. There's my zoom doing it right through this thing. So super, super handy. And it's called the Storm Jacket. Um, I purchased it from a, a company in the US. Just, if you're interested in that, just Google Storm Jacket camera cover. Ah. Fingers and hands. I, these, I use these sort of mid weight gloves. I can, they're just light enough where I can feel all my buttons through it, which is great but they still get cold after a while. So what I like to do is have a pair of large mitts like these ones. And I can stick these gloves into the mitts and they keep all my fingers together. And what that does, that keeps them warm. It's keeping all the fingers. And I'll even take my finger up, my thumb out of the thumb thing and stick it in there to keep them warm. And, uh, and this sometimes I don't even use this glove and I'll just, uh, I'll just use the minute itself. And because I really don't use this one a whole lot. It, this, this hand is not as important as this. This one works most of my buttons on my camera. And uh, so I can just take this off. And what's really great, I don't do it so much here because I don't have the winds, but when you're up in the Arctic and you're up in Northern Canada where there's no trees, the tree line is not there. There's no trees. Um, and you're on the side of Hudson Bay and on the shore of Hudson Bay is, winds are huge sometimes. And you take your mitt off and you drop it on the ground to take a picture of an Arctic fox or a polar bear. And next thing you know, it's gone. Actually, I've seen someone drop their mitt and it never even hit the ground. And it didn't hit the ground for about 200 meters before it touched the ground. It just kept going. So what, if you can buy a pair of mitts with something like this, with these tethers on them. Remember these when you were kids? These are great. And uh, I use them all the time when I'm, when I'm up north when it's in extreme cold temperatures. Remember, polar bears, it's not always cold. But uh, when it does get cold, it gets really cold. So this is, uh, this is a handy way of 
of carrying your mitts like this here. But uh, something else I recommend, well, if you're, even if you're not in deep snow, is a pair of snowshoes, so handy to have because you are burning a fraction of the energy you would if you tried to walk in this stuff. Even in a foot of snow or six inches of snow, you can't see what's underneath there. So you can twist your ankle and, and the amount of effort involved in walking in, in, in through, through bush like this where you can't see what's underneath the snow is enormous. And you put this on, you can just, you can go over top of all of it. So snowshoes are fantastic to have. And don't go buying the biggest ones you can get because they're hard to get through the trees. But make sure you get ones that are suitable for your weight. So talk to an expert, find out what size you have. I mean, these ones here, I could probably go a little bigger than this for my weight, but I end up in a lot of tight situations. But uh, they've been really good. One of the things when you're buying snowshoes, I prefer, I don't like those snaps. I prefer this type of strap with the buckles. Nothing to break, okay? There's nothing there to break. There's just, that's, that's the type you want. You don't want the ones that, the ratchet buckles, because they break. I see this all the time with guests who I've had out with me who, uh, who, who bring that type of snowshoe and they get excited and they tighten it down too far and next thing, snap, they break, especially in the cold weather. Okay, two more things I want to talk about here is when you have all this snow, how are you going to keep all this off your, off your camera gear? And, and this is the best thing. This is uh, what they call a microfilament cloth, and I keep it in a Ziploc bag, and you can wipe it down. What you're going to find is you're going to sometimes fog up your eyepiece. You can wipe it down. You can wipe down your camera. You can wipe your lens off in case you get something in there. It's, it's just a fantastic big piece that you can wipe your nose, but then don't wipe your camera. <laughs> uh, also, that uh, something I really like is this thing right here. This is, a, uh, this is called a thermal charge, and this is a hand warmer. And this is, you can buy those chemical warmers, but this is a rechargeable one. And it gets warmer than the regular pocket warmers normally. And you just hit this button, and yeah, you count to about 20, and this thing starts to warm up. And uh, you put that in your pocket, it actually will just fit nicely in your pocket. So let's say, for instance, I'm doing some video, and, and you know, I don't care. These, these gloves here that have these special things for touching your screen, it doesn't work. You can't slide, you can't do anything, you can't focus with this stuff on your gloves. So they don't work at all. You have to expose your fingers. And when you expose your fingers, they're going to get cold. So then what you do, you can just keep this in your pocket and you can keep it warm. And you take it, you take it from a nice warm pocket and then you can, you can do whatever you need to do. And uh, that's, a, that's a big plus. That really makes life much nicer. And then when you're done with it, you can just press the button, turn it off. Charge it when you get home. So I want to talk about batteries. Uh, lithium batteries work like any other battery. It's a chemical process. And uh, the colder it is, the, the slower the process gets. And, uh, and what happens is if it's really cold, you start to, the, the process of, of producing energy is slowed right down and to the point where it's not producing energy at all. It's not that you can't bring this battery back to life. So when you hear people say, oh, your battery's dead or my battery's dead, it's really not dead. If, if I usually carry two batteries with me, sometimes I wish I would carry three. But when I carry a spare battery with me and it's, and it's cold, minus 10 or whatever, or below that, actually minus 10 degrees, I can get a full day out of this battery on a DSLR. You know, if you're using the mirrorless cameras, obviously not because there's a lot more stuff going on inside that camera that needs the battery. Um, but uh, for a DSLR, I can get uh, all day out of something like this. So uh, what I do is with the other battery, I stick it in my, inside my jacket against my body. So that'll stay warm. And if it's really cold, like I've shot in minus 40, minus 50 degrees for polar bears and Arctic fox, extremely cold conditions. And I've used batteries that I have to switch batteries out every 10 minutes, even less than that I've had it, where once the battery starts to slow down, 
I will take it out of the camera where I'm not getting any more shots and I'll stick it inside and I'll take the other one out and I'll stick it into my camera. And I'll be able to get another five, 10 minutes worth of use out of that. Pull that out, switch it again. That's where it would be nice to have three batteries. But uh, so that battery there is, uh, it's amazing how long it'll last if, as long as it's not too cold. But uh, it's always important to carry a second battery with you no matter what. But uh, I also want to talk to you guys about boots. That's uh, why I came inside here. Um, I've got lots of boots. I've got uh, rubber boots. I've got this. Here is my favorite boot for snowshoeing. It is a, I'm not sure whether it's a 600 gram boot. I can't remember what the, what the uh, it's Thinsulate that's inside of this. I don't know what temperature is good for, but it doesn't matter what temperatures they write on it. It really is much less than that, I find. Maybe that's what your feet can stand, but that's not a comfort level. It's kind of like a sleeping bag. You, you have to really watch what it says. But you know, if you buy uh, a boot that's good to uh, maybe uh, minus 90 degrees, you know, Celsius or Fahrenheit, you know, either one of those, it's, it's, it's not going to be a, uh, it's, it's not going to be a, an issue with getting your feet cold in minus 10 degrees. It shouldn't be when the, when the, when the boot is new. Um, at minus 40 degrees, it could be, um, especially if the boot's been used a bit here. This boot's got an awful lot of use. This one here, of course, I like it because I can lace it. And, uh, and it's really great to use with my uh, snowshoes because there's no play in the boot once I lace it. And here's, the, here's another one of my boots. This is a, uh, another one I can lace and I can use with snowshoes if I want. I don't like the back too much. It's very smooth, but it is a really warm boot. But usually when I do a lot of snowshoeing, I don't need something that's really warm because then my feet might sweat in them. So this is usually what I take with me. When I go camping, I'll take this pair of boots with me along with with another pair, you know, something like this here. Um, so what I would use for just doing photography, let's say I'm sitting still outside, okay? Let's say it's minus 15 degrees Celsius, minus 10, and I want something that's, uh, or even minus 30, let's say I want something that's gonna be really warm and something I can stand still in. Like let's say I'm photographing polar bears and it's minus 10 out. Or let's say I'm photographing um, white-tailed deer and it's minus 30 out and I'm sitting still in a blind or something like that. I want a boot that's really warm. I do remember, I don't have to walk too far in them so I don't have to worry. I'm not wearing snowshoes so I don't need the laces really. I could get by with any one of these boots. But what I would look for is something that has a removable liner. And the reason is when I get home, and I want to go out the next day or I want to go out two days later, if I buy a boot that does not have a removable um, liner like this, let's take this, this one here. See, this is the liner that comes out. These liners after, or any of these boots, after you've used them for a day, they have, your feet are letting off, uh, um, they sweat. They, uh, there's condensation from the cold of the boot to the inside warmth of your foot. There's condensation that, be, that can be created it's, uh, it's just moisture inside your boot. No matter how you look at it, when you, get back, when you get back from a day, there's moisture in there. And there's moisture not only inside, but there's moisture outside of the liner. And that needs to dry. So if you, uh, if you buy a boot that does not have a liner, well, how do you dry it? How do you dry the outside? Like this boot here. See this boot here? This boot has got like 800 grams of, of, of insulation. It's a really warm boot when you buy it new. Um, but you use it for one day, there's no liner inside this. There's no way to pull the liner out so you can dry the outside so the moisture stays in there. And as soon as this boot gets any moisture inside or any of these boots have moisture inside, you start to lose its insulating value because now it's, it's getting wet. Um, this boot here is my least favorite in many ways, um, but uh, I'll, get, I'll get to that later on. Back to the liners though, there's different thickness of liners. This one here is not very thick, but yet this boot I think is good down to, it said like minus 91 degrees, and, and, and that's Fahrenheit, but Celsius would be the same once it gets to that temperature. 
and uh, and it's a it's a it's a really good boot. This is my son's boot. This one here, I can't remember, but I think this one's even is to even colder temperatures than than that one. This one here is a much thicker liner. Let me show you this one. If I can get it out. It's a little tougher to get out. This one here, this is a Sorel. Sorel boot. Now look at this liner. See, it's much thicker. And uh, I really like it. It's, it's very strong. It's, this is not a cheap boot. It's more money than this boot here. Um, but uh, look at this. It's got this reflective um, material on it, which I think it might help. So this is a really warm boot. And you can take it out and it can dry both outside and inside. Really important. You know, you don't have to put it on a heater. If you're going to be inside and it's room temperature, you can put it anywhere. It doesn't have to be sitting on a heater to dry this out. It will naturally dry without having to do that. So this is a, uh, a, uh, a good boot to use as far as for sitting still in a blind or doing photography. You know, if you're going on a polar bear photography trip, this boot's good. This, these, these boots are really good. Um, this one here is really warm as well. It's very expensive. This is like $280. I can't remember. It was some crazy amount of money for this boot. Um, but I just wanted something that was really warm. And I find now that I don't need to spend that much money on a boot to get a good boot. But, uh, but that's, uh, again, this one's got a liner that can come out of it too. Now, back to boots. Now, the thing is, let's say you're going on a polar bear trip. And uh, you have to fly with these boots. So you put them in your carry-on luggage. Oh, sorry, your checked-in luggage. And uh, you're going, wow, my boots weigh so much. I can't believe it. I can't take some of my clothes with me or I can't you know, throw a few extra things in there like my binoculars because of my boots. This is where you want to check the weights. Here's, I've got a weight scale. So I'm going to tell you what this boot weighs. This boot weighs over three pounds. That means you have over six, over six pounds worth of boots with you alone. And if you can only take, you know, 40 or 50 pounds in your carry-on luggage, you, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta really consider this stuff. This boot is on the other end of the scale. These, this is the lightest boots I have ever used. Now these are my son's boots, but I've used these up in the uh, Arctic before. This one here is exactly one pound. It's only two pounds for these boots. They, these are called Nats. These are redhead boots. These are Bass Pro Shops boots. I think, uh, I think they are okay if you're not, if, if you're not going to spend the entire day in them. I think a lot of hunters use these boots. I look at this. These, these boots are just over a year old. There's, there's already a crack in them. So I don't recommend these boots. These are, these are the redhead uh, boots by Bass Pro Shops. Um, I far, by far prefer the ones that have the liners in them. These ones here are called Nats, N-A-T-S. They are by far my favorite boot. I don't know if they are, I don't think they're quite as warm as a pair of Sorrells like this. Um, these are the ones that had the liners. These are much heavier. These not quite as heavy as these, but they're somewhere, I'm guessing they're about two and a half pounds for these. So you're carrying about five pounds worth of boot with you. Okay, but they're super warm, but heavy. These ones here, they're just expensive, and uh, I don't see you needing to spend. These are, these are Cabela boots, and, uh, but they lace down. They can be used for if you wanted to do uh, snowshoeing. They're almost like a moon boot. Okay, so those, and, and then of course this is strictly a snowshoeing boot. This is not something I recommend for doing wildlife photography where you're sitting still waiting for something. So those are the, uh, the boots that I have, and you guys can make the decision of what works for you. I hope this helps you.